Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, and as always, we are happy you're here and we're happy to be here with you. Please subscribe, share us with your friends. Just a, a, just a like. A like would help. It, it's amazing. Oh, I, it, boy, if I got some information to share with you today, and I get so excited about this because I'm so proud of our, our, our accomplishments. Uh, we've been working on a project, the Audible Proof and Trail Hydrometer. We've been working on this for months. Um, and just like the Audible PID that we worked on for months, uh, we came up with a resolution. Uh, now, we do have another resolution, and that is we have developed and built, tested, an Audible Proof and Trail Hydrometer that, that is absolutely mind-boggling, and it works, and, and we, we've actually broken this down to just the simple basics. So what I want to share with you today is I want to share with you all the items that we use, all the components, so that if you're interested in trying to throw one together, you can. Um, it, although, uh, now I want to, up front I want to state there are going to be some challenges. Uh, your challenges are going to be with the programming and stuff. Please, I, I'm here to help where I can, but you, if you have no background or experience with electronics and things like that it's this may not be this it, it may but it may not be one of the things you attempt to put together because it can be daunting okay oh ah oh, i'm so excited hey i want to first make a comment um that all of this was in support or is in support of a yeah a small contingent of our community um, which are those distillers out there who are blind. Um, it, being blind, trust me, a blind person does not allow their disability to inhibit their desire to experience a hobby. So we should do everything we possibly can to assist them. And that we've taken that on as a personal challenge and we've come up with a solution. And we're going to offer that. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to move, fly down to Florida, see Mike. I'm going to do another video down there and share this with him and let him have at it. So I hope you stay tuned and see that video as it's coming within the next couple weeks. All right. Now, here, are, here were the challenges up front. Mark, my mentor, my friend, my confidant, you see, there's no way that I could have done this by myself. So this was not an individual solution, okay? Um, this was a, a group of folks that came together with ideas and, and, and thoughts and processes, and Mark stepped out, and he is responsible for all the programming. Uh, and I have to say that. And, oh, by the way, and, and all the thought process, a lot of the thought process that went behind this. Now, here's what we know. We know that a proof and trail a proof and trail hydrometer, we know that it operates like this. Uh, based on how deep it floats or how high it floats tells us what the alcohol proof or percentage is after distillation. So yes, you need a parrot in order to operate this. I mean, what a parrot offers you is the ability to check your proof during the distillation process. So you'll know instantaneously always what the proof is coming out because it says it floats as it's being produced. Okay, now we knew that this thing does this, and that's what we needed to find. A, how do you track the up and down movement? And man, I'll tell you, we thought about just about everything, and we did come up with a solution. But it was everything from RFID tagging to magnetic resonance to there was there were a multitude of ideas that just like Edison, we found that there's a thousand ways that we found didn't work. Uh, one that worked extremely well was time of flight sensor, which is a laser that's shot out. And we know what the time of, uh, with, the, with the flight time, the speed of light, there we go. Yeah. Um, and if you can capture that, the reflection of that light, uh, there's just a real simple formula to figure out how far away that object is. And so we use it, it's called a time of flight sensor. And um, so we use that with an Arduino. Now, let me, let's, let me walk through this so you'll understand the components of this entire process. I got 
<clears throat> an Arduino Uno. Um, and that's what we started off with. Uh, matter of fact, started off with, a uh, yeah, an Arduino Uno. Uh, we put it on many different boards, and it works on each and every one of them. Um, it, the end result will be, I'll go from the Arduino Uno to the Arduino Nano. All we're doing is downsizing. I mean, they both have the same capabilities. Uh, this one's just tiny. So, uh, and that's what I'm working on back here. You'll see I've got all this wire. It, it just, it's a mess back here, but trust me, it's an organized mess. Okay, so you'll need one Arduino Uno. Um, this was no, this one is called an, a micro SD card adapter, and this is made by Adafruit. And yeah, that's all it's called. There's no number on that. Uh, just a micro SD card reader. That's that's really what it is. Uh, the, oh yeah, then we have the LM386 audio amplifier, and then oh, of course, with this SD card reader, you're gonna need a small micro SD card, and that that just goes in the SD card reader because that's where you load the uh, voice uh, for your program. Okay, and then last but not least, no, not last, but next, is the, this is called a VL53L1X. And this is the time of flight sensor. And this one's made by SparkFun. Uh, they're made by many different companies. Um, they come in smaller packages, meaning a little bit more tiny, and they come in larger packages. Uh, but they all work the same way. And if you go onto sparkfun.com, uh, which is an excellent website, it, they'll show you exactly how to hook this thing up. And then, of course, you're going to need a speaker. I got one small speaker I pulled out of a, an old laptop computer I was tossing out. One hydrometer. One parrot one parrot extension because that goes right here that's how we track the distance and of course the cap so far so good all right i'll list all those things in the comment section below uh, this video so you'll be able to get at those all right now that we're here um let me explain a couple of the challenges now when, when working with mark has been such a joy Mark has, I just got to brag about this uh, just a little bit. M Mark has multiple degrees, advanced degrees in chemical engineering, math, and chemistry. Um, and uh, he's been a wealth, a, I'm talking a wealth of information, and he has his own YouTube channel. And uh, I'm just going to, there it is right there. I just, you know, go to, go to aquaponics. It, aquaponics itself is a new system that Mark is working on designing of, and it's almost like, the best way I can describe it is, let's grow some fish, do some brewing, let's do some gardening at the same, uh, this whole system, this whole, is all together and it feeds each other and services itself, becomes its own ecosystem. It, it's a fascinating topic and uh, yeah, of course, Mark's looking for volunteers that want to help him work through some of the challenges because the guy's smart enough to understand that he doesn't know everything. So uh, you can get in touch with him through his YouTube channel. Now, here's the first challenge that we had, of course, was the, uh, the up and down movement. We resolve that with the time of flight sensor. So what we do is we place a time of flight sensor above that and we measure everywhere that this proof and trail hydrometer happens to be located. We also found that our best results came when we took a small piece of plastic and made about a, oh, about a three quarters of an inch round hat, we call it a hat, and glue that to the top of the hydrometer. So therefore, if it, you know, you know sometimes how your hydrometer will kind of can't one way or can't the other way, uh, what that did was it gave it enough surface area for that time of flight sensor to hit it and return uh, because if it misses it, of course, you get an error reading. So what we wanted was we wanted consistency. So we put a small hat on top of it. All right. Uh, the other thing that we did, though, is here's what I fashioned. I fashioned a time of flight sensor inside this black cap that goes on top of the parrot head. And 
I've got three screws. You can see those in there. And it's hard to see from where you're at, but I've got springs behind that. Now, what that allows me to do with those three screws is that allows me to turn those screws and adjust that time of flight sensor ever so slightly. So I can adjust it like that, like that, like that, like that, until I can fine tune it where it's shooting straight down. Okay? And that's what those screws are there for. So, I mean, that was just one of the adaptations we found that was really necessary in order to fine tune the equipment. And we wanted to make sure that it was repeatable. So I built like three of these in a row um, with different boards. The Uno, the, I already put it away, the Nano, the Mega, uh, just to make sure it was repeatable and we can get the same results each time and it worked out perfect. Okay, here was the major challenge that you'll also encounter if you try to put one of these together. Let me get a little closer. Now you'll notice on your proof and trail hydrometer, so you see the difference between 10 proof and 20 proof is ever so slight. But the difference between, let's move up here and go from 150 to 160 proof is somewhere in the neighborhood of about three times the distance. So what I'm trying to say is that, you see, this is not a linear scale. It's, it's not, you know, one millimeter here in value of proof uh, is way more than one millimeter here. One millimeter here is less than one proof. Uh, down here, one millimeter here is about six proof. So you see the scale was not linear so it was, there was a challenge in developing, and again, thanks Mark, um, with his mathematical uh, genius was able to develop a, an algorithm, for lack of better words, I'd call it a, uh, a, a, a programmable um, formula that actually, he plotted this on a curve and was able to pick it out and, and, and develop portions of that, okay, uh, in order for, and then, of course, your time of flight sensor picks up the distance, it goes into the Arduino, uh, your Arduino, and the program that's in the Arduino figures out what is the distance, what are the mins and the maxes, am I using the upper, middle, or lower scale, uh, what's my conversion, and then it converts that, of course, pulls out the information off of the SD card, sends it through the amplifier, <coughs> lo and behold, the speaker speaks, that's 120 proof. And see, that's how it's simple that actually works. Now, the program itself, most of the information you're going to find when sparkfun.com, again, uh, when you go there, uh, you're going to find that the, uh, the information, the libraries and everything you need for this device uh, is all located right there, and you add that to this. Your, your challenge is going to be writing your, the portions of your program to do exactly what it is you want it to do. And then very simply, on a small SD card, if you just record your own voice or anybody you want, and all they have to do is speak one, two, three, four, all the way up to 19, and then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 200. And then the word proof. Um, and you put that into a, an audio program that you have, and you break that up into individual, small as you could possibly get them, but individual words, one. And then you save that, and of course, you, your file is just going to look like one, one dot wave. 2 dot wave, 3 dot wave, 4 dot wave, all the way down, proof dot wave. Um, and then in your program, when it calls for it, when it figures out what it is, it'll speak first word, second word, third word, if there's a third word. Uh, or if there's a second word, 121 proof. That was four words. It'll speak those, okay? I hope I haven't lost anybody. But let me tell you what, in order to get to where we are right now, I'm so excited. Um, and this is how this is going to work. It's simply your time of flight sensor 
I've got a small slit right here so that the wire slides through there and that's just for maintenance purposes and it's just in case something comes loose you'll be able to get to it that goes on there your hydrometer goes inside your parrot that fits down on top of the parrot and there's the stop so it stops at the same place each time and we're only working with hundred and fifty or so give or take millimeters in distance uh, your time of flight sensor is accurate from 40 millimeters to 4,000 millimeters and we're working with 100 so we've got a lot of accuracy we plug in our time of flight sensor to our Arduino attach our SD card reader along with the amplifier to a speaker turn it on and then as our proof and trail hydrometer moves up and down our tube it's constantly being we call it interrogated and we interrogate that you can interrogate it up to 20 times a second if you want to it doesn't matter to me um, everything that you need to do is within the program so again uh, I offer this to you as a complete simple no <laughs> a complete project that we're so excited and so happy and proud to be able to produce and share with our blind community uh, as well as share with you. Um, you. You will, if you're gonna build one on your own, you are definitely gonna have some challenges. I, I'm upfront, I'm being honest. Uh, you're gonna definitely have some challenges with programming. Um, find someone who is good at programming uh, to help you through that and that's uh, CC plus, uh, yeah, the programming language for Arduino. Um, and you will have just as much fun as we've had with this. All I can say is happy distilling.